Hi everybody, it's Scott here again. I know it's been a little while. I've been uh, very, very busy. Hope this is helpful to you. I know a lot of you guys have been asking for a um, color conversion demo in Premiere Pro. I'm just gonna go over this really, really quickly because um, I don't think it's efficient to get too into the weeds on every color program. I mean, you can do this in DaVinci Resolve, you can do this in Final Cut Pro. I know a lot of people were heckling me for not using DaVinci Resolve. And my answer to that is DaVinci Resolve does not support Hybrid Log Gamma yet, um, at least not within the Rec 2020 uh, HLG color space. So the conversions just turn out really wonky as of now, at least for the free version of DaVinci Resolve. I don't know about the pro version, too rich for my blood. <laughs> Maybe we'll get to that one day. In the meantime, uh, if you are a Resolve fanboy, I love Resolve. It's great. I'm just not doing that right now. That's another video for another time. Okay, so here we are in Premiere Pro. I know a lot of you guys got hung up on the LUTs I was using in the last color conversion demo, specifically because I was, do I was doing a film emulation. I was basically showing the process of starting with your digital negative film stock or LUT and then your color correction in between and then the third part of that color sandwich which is your print stock essentially copying traditional film um, printing techniques. So that's the super fancy intention for LUTs but I I know most LUTs that we all work with are usually just one conversion step and that's fine. I'm going to start off, just so we don't get hung up on what LUTs we're using, I'm just going to start off with a Rec. 709, uh, with a log to Rec. 709 LUT. And I'll provide a link to where I got this one on the video. So I have my S-Log3 footage here, um, shot two stops overexposed, so it actually does look pretty good when you bring all the color back in and you do the conversion. And then hybrid log gamma footage. Um, you can see here, the hybrid log gamma footage is already converted. So this is what I was talking about in Premiere Pro, at least to my knowledge, the conversion is done automatically from HLG3 to Rec. 709 because to my knowledge and from the research I've done so far, uh, Premiere Pro does not support a native project setting for Rec. 2020 or hybrid log gamma as Final Cut does, Final Cut Pro, and that's part of the reason I was using Final Cut Pro is that it does uh, have native support for that. Um, so anyway, as you can see here, unlike in Final Cut, the footage is not overexposed. Um, it's a little more like working with log. If you saw my Final Cut demo, basically what would represent your, for now let's just do one LUT. So I'm going to do input LUT, browse, and then on my desktop I have my log to rec709.cube, and again I'll link to this, open, and there you go. Very basic, very simple. Um, something I found interesting. So you can see there's some weird vignetting. So that, you know, I, I was very excited about Hyperlog Gamma, but as you can see, it's not perfect. And it requires some love in the same way that um, S-Log3 does. Um, but yeah, you can go ahead and tweak it it's still very flexible as it is in uh, Final Cut Pro I can bring down those highlights more if you like more of that sort of flat kind of look that you can get from S-Log for example and then let's just let's take a closer look so I'm punching in to 200% just so you can see some of that color detail and you know you're getting a little bit of artifacting but um, overall not too bad for 8-bit. It's nothing you would really see at 100%. Now let's go to our S-Log. So here you can see on the S-Log footage there is a little more uh, artifacting in the colors. You can see a lot of pinks bleeding in with greens here. And yeah, it's not pretty. But again, at 100% and for YouTube use or you know whatever and there's a lot of dynamic range there, and there doesn't seem to be the same vignetting, but maybe it's just the way that it's exposed. I don't know, I'm not seeing any vignetting. Okay, so now I'm going to show you that process that I was talking about when you are trying to emulate um, film. And so we're gonna start out with our input LUT. 
browse and I use the um, vision color impulse LUTs that are designed to look like film. I'm going to go with log generic and for my digital negative I'm going to click my vision 3 5219 make sure it's negative dot sin make sure it's sin okay and you can see it makes it kind of flat because this is how film is usually emulated um, before you put it on your print stock then I'm gonna go to creative so if that was your input this is sort of your output now I'm gonna do my print stock so browse browse impulse and you are going to go with Cineon conversions under Cineon conversions any one of these really will work I like D60, it's a Kodak 2383 um, print stock that is currently being used in the industry. And there you go. Obviously, you can dial back the intensity, you can play with your vibrance, you can go to your correction. This is kind of the meat of your sandwich, as it were and you can correct to your desired look. I'm not gonna be super prescriptive here because, um, you know, a lot of people ask like how to grade it and whatever else. And frankly, if you don't, if you don't know what look you're trying to achieve, then you probably shouldn't be doing this process. You should probably just be doing a log to rec 709 uh, conversion. So anyway, there you have it. I hope that was helpful to you and keep an eye out for more videos. Um, I'm going to do some more comparison videos, particularly with daylight. So thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to this video. And if you haven't seen my um, short film Fight Night, it's shot entirely in Hyperlog Gamma 3. And it's a fun little example of what a narrative film would look like if shot in HLG3. So hope you can check it out and uh, provide some feedback. Thank you so much for watching.